from our previous tutorials. If we built a database from scratch, we'd see a database name here instead of the string. OK, let's get our users table first. We need all four columns. And click Next. Let's test query to see how it looks. Looks fine. Finish. OK, now let's select Edit Columns. We don't need to display the user ID. That's just for the database to identify the record. Let's expand the command branch and choose Select. We'll move it to the first position and click OK. As you see here, Enable Selection is checked. This will actually do the same thing. Let's select Auto Format, choose Black and Blue 1, and click OK. Let's resize it a little bit. Now let's use another grid view control. From the Choose Data Source drop down menu, I'll choose New Data Source. Select Database. OK. Connection String. Next, here I'll opt to specify a custom SQL statement or stored procedure. Next. Now let's use the Query Builder. From here we need to select the Newsletter table and the Number of Sends table. Add and Close. Let's make this window a little bit bigger. Now let's select Newsletter Name, Number of Sends ID, and Number of Sends. From here I'm also going to select let me just drag this out a bit. Number of sends user ID. We're not going to display it, but we're going to filter by the user ID. Based on the user ID, we're going to pull our newsletter names and the number of times this letter has been issued to a particular user. OK, let's click Execute Query. The user ID, let's enter user1 and click OK. Here we have our results. eMini was sent to user1 five times, options trading seven times, and Forex was sent six times. Let's click Execute Query again. Let's enter user number four. I know nothing's been sent to this user yet. As a result, Nothing is returned back to us. Let's click OK now. Click Next. Now let's select a parameter source from where we'll get our user ID. We're going to choose Control. The Control ID will be Grid View 1. Next. Here we can test our query. Let's enter 2 for the user ID and click OK. Everything seems to be fine. Let's click Finish. Now let's go to Auto Format, Black and Blue 1. OK. And we'll resize it a bit. Now let's check what we've done so far. And here's our display of Grid View 1. I see Grid View 2. Grid View 2 shows the newsletter name and the number of sends. I'm going to be deleting the third column, Number of Sends ID. Let's resize our browser a little bit. And let's get back to Visual Studio. OK. Select Edit Columns. Let's make the same modifications we made with Grid View 1. Remove the number of sends ID, and we'll add a command field. Let's move it up. OK. And OK. Now let's drag in a Details View control. Choose the data source. 
new data source, OK, connection string, specify a custom SQL statement or stored procedure and click Next, Query Builder, Add Newsletter, and the Number of Sends table, and click Add, Close. Let's resize this a little bit. Here I'm going to select the newsletter name and the number of sends. Under the Column section, we'll filter by the number of sends ID. Let's filter here. And let's click outside to register and run the query. Number of sends. Enter a value of 1 and click OK. And looks OK, so let's click OK. And next. Now where should we get the number of sends ID from? Control. Control ID. Grid view 2. Next. Let's test our query. Enter 2. OK. Looks fine. Let's finish. And let's go to Auto Format now. Choose Black and Blue 1. Click OK. And let's test it out now. Here's Grid View 1. Let's click Select. Bob Smith receives E-mini, options trading, and Forex. Let's select E-mini. And we have the details view of the E-mini now. We also know that the last two records are empty. When I click, nothing will appear here. Now if some of this was difficult to follow at this point, don't worry about it just now. Keep on watching the subsequent tutorials and soon the pieces are going to start falling into place. And this concludes our tutorial about relational databases.